Here's a bit of dog. Oh. Hi guys. Oh man. What a day. Uh, good Lord, where is it? It is a Thursday, October 26, 2023. It is now, good Lord, 10 o'clock at night as the little dog and I, we count down our last three days at Bugs in a Jar Farm before uh, packing up our stuff and heading down to Florida to spend the next six months in a in a trailer in a swamp at the end of a dirt road in uh, Florida. Huh, imagine that. Uh, and I am exhausted. I have done more work in the past three days. I think I'm, I'm just talking flat out physical labor. This 64 year old man has done more physical labor, I can pretty much assure you, than anybody listening to this rant. Uh, <laughs> 20 years ago, I would have hired somebody to do all of this back in my, my former life. So anyway, what I've stumbled into, as you guys might have noticed, is I'm doing a I'm kind of going back to my roots here at Humpty Dumpty Tribe now that I have managed to make myself completely irrelevant again. That I have, I, you know, I put all the Doomer stuff over there at Collapse Chronicles. And I got to say, guys, I'm pretty proud of the new asshole I just ripped, that clueless bitch, uh, Jessica Wildfire over there. I let that little eco pussy at uh, Collapse Chronicles take it uh, because it was Doomer stuff. But I have to say I'm kind of proud of my Jessica Wildfire asshole ripping Hey, you might want to go over there and check that out, any fans of Jessica Wildfire. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> since I'm not doing the Doomer stuff and just trying to figure out what to do with this channel, I am uh, just kind of doing a, I don't know what this will turn into, a, a series of... Uh, rants, or I guess they're raps more than rants, uh, just talking about my decision to walk away from the dominant cultural paradigm. Uh, good Lord, going back 15, 16 years, and now that I've been down the road less traveled for uh, these years, uh, just looking back and, uh, and just telling my story for anyone who wants to listen to it, uh, just telling one Doomer's story, uh, and, and if there's anything you can get out of it, then great. Uh, <clears throat> so... I was going, my, the subject of, of my rap tonight was going to be the, what did I say last night, the pitfalls and the potholes uh, you will encounter taking the road less traveled. And I will get to that one, good Lord, I, I, I could make a whole channel on the uh, pitfalls and the potholes you will encounter on the road less traveled. But then I got up this morning to read my comments on my rant last night. And after reading them, a couple of people made some good points because of my awful choice and the title of my video last night, which, what did I call it? Oh, shit, because I've changed it now. I think <clears throat> the title of that rant last night was How to Break Out of the Matrix. 
how to break out of the matrix and get out there and enjoy it while you can a doomer's story. And the problem with YouTube, anyone who's who has a channel knows this, you are limited to 100 characters on the title. And so the original title was how to break out of the dominant cultural paradigm and get out there and enjoy it while you can, a doomer's story. But the problem was I could not fit in the words a doomer's story. And so instead of just taking them out like I did uh, in, the, in the revised title, because... Guys, I mean, I am a doomer, and a lot of people listening to me are doomers, but since this is becoming less and less of a doomer channel, I, I don't want you to think that only doomers uh, can walk away from the dominant cultural paradigm. Uh, you don't have to be a doomer to do it, but it helps. So anyway, since it didn't fit... I just, it just, it, I, I was exhausted, and, and it was an absolute blunder to shorten the dominant cultural paradigm to this, uh, to this very overused cliche, the matrix. I was just trying to fit it into a hundred. Uh, it, it, into a uh, hundred characters, and so what did I do? Ironically enough, is I made a cultural reference to the very dominant cultural paradigm that I walked away from. Okay, so while the dominant cultural paradigm is part of the matrix. Uh, okay, they are not uh, interchangeable, and so I need. Uh, so I so I got these comments. I'm just going to read these comments and my response to them, and then I will get on with my rant. Gloria said, "You are still in it, and always will be, no matter what you say." And by it, I'm assuming she meant the matrix. And she is correct. Uh, if I can use this despicable little cliche cultural paradigm term, the matrix, uh, we are all in the matrix. I am still in the matrix. And to the degree that uh, global industrial civilization is part of the matrix, and it certainly is. Uh, I and everybody else are in, uh, in both the matrix, and we are all members of global industrial civilization. It is just part of being born uh, in, in the last hundred years. Uh, if you have, if you were born in the last hundred years, you are part of it. Uh, my response to Gloria originally was the trick with the matrix is to learn how to navigate it with one foot in and one foot out to enjoy the fruits of global industrial civilization, such as fossil fuels, internet, etc., while rejecting the dominant cultural paradigm of shit. That, that is a good subject for a rant, so perhaps I will run with it tonight. And so that is what I'm going to be talking about, is uh, walking with one foot in and one foot out of both the global industrial civilization and the dominant cultural paradigm, 
which obviously are the, you know, the twin-headed snake uh, leading to the collapse of a planet. Uh, they are they're not exactly the same, but, but you damn well better believe that they feed each other. Uh, the the globe the global industrial civilization that we're all born into, uh, you know, from cradle to grave, is the biggest cheerleader of the dominant cultural paradigm, uh, and, and vice versa. They feed each other. Why? Which is one reason. Why it's doubly hard to uh, to get out, and since you're not going to completely get out of both of them, you and the, the most you're going to be able to do is uh, is learn how to walk with one foot in and one foot out. And that's what we're going to be talking about. But I do need just to take a brief pause with this uh, with this troll calling himself John Smith. Uh, John Smith, I, 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 I'm thinking who John Smith is, is a buddy of mine just fucking with me. I don't know why I always immediately blame Osama number five, or Bella Lugrisi, whatever he's calling him. Oh, you know, John Smith, I think this is a, a buddy fucking with me, but I don't know, so his, I'm not going to get into his long-winded, fatuous second comment, but his first comment was, you ain't breaking out of shit, old-timer. And uh, <clears throat> my response to John Smith uh, thank you for reminding me I need to change the title of that video from Matrix to Dominant Cultural Paradigm. Seeing that the overused cliché term, the Matrix, is part of the Dominant Cultural Paradigm and has been co-opted by clueless moron normies, I need to rid my own vocabulary of it. And I'm going to try to do that, and I will uh, try to encourage you to do the same thing uh, if you don't want to sound like a normie. Uh, it's, it's just... Uh, it, 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 anyway, so I guess another uh, way of, of saying all of this is um, if... if you don't, if you don't want to be a normie, maybe that's a better way. But before I go into there, I, I just want to say to John Smith uh, that he's, he's leading me to believe, as I say, I think it's just a buddy of mine fucking with me. But if he really is, uh, he's calling me old, so he's implying that he is younger than me. So I, I, I just want to tell John Smith... Uh, if, if you are, quote, for real, uh, you little pussy, you would not last two weeks living like I do before running back to your mommy to change the shit out of your diapers, okay? There is no fucking way, John Smith, that you could have kept up with this 64-year-old man with a broken back, a herniated shoulder, who has had three hernias the last three days. You little pussy. You would have been whining and on your fucking smartphone. And, 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 and if you're under 40 years old, uh, I know exactly, you know, just in my real life, I know exactly one person under the age of 40 who can keep up with me. And that is, uh, of course, my buddy Alistair. You might know him as Tannic. So, uh, Tannic, 
you are the exception to the rule. You are the only person on this planet that I personally know under the age of 40 who can keep up with, with, with this decrepit old man. But John Smith, uh, assuming you're not, or all I know you are, Alistair, just fucking with me. But uh, you little pussy, you could not do what I do because you don't have the fucking balls that I do. And it does take balls to walk away from the dominant cultural paradigm. Uh, it, 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 it takes uh, serious balls. Uh, and sort of, now I, I do know one fellow, uh, Nielsen Al Alhambra, if you're listening to this, Nielsen Alhambra, uh, <clears throat> he really did more than I will ever do. Brother, I have been to your place. I see he lives in a tiny house uh, in, in Texas. That man has walked the fuck away uh, from, the war, from the dominant cultural paradigm of clueless fucking moron normies. Uh, a big hand for Nielsen Alhambra. Uh, you are the one man I know who has actually done what I'm talking about. I think you have taken both feet out of the dom out of the dominant cultural paradigm, brother. Um, but anyway, uh, I think this term dominant cultural paradigm, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Terrence McKenna used this term a lot. Uh, <laughs> Terrence was asked one time, it's a hilarious interview, you know, someone, uh, he was opening up after his one of his raps to questions, and somebody asked him, like, dude, uh, the way you spell out what is going on uh, on this planet, and, you know, this was back in the 80s and 90s that he was talking about, like, like how the hell... Uh, haven't you been silenced, uh, at least thrown in jail? And Terrence's wor uh, response was, I use big words. I use big words and the dominant cultural paradigm, the normies, the cops, the gatekeepers of the normies have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. They have no clue what my big words mean. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, you know, Terrence McKenna, uh, he never, he definitely uh, never left the, uh, he, like I and, and other people, uh, Terrence McKenna definitely had one foot firmly planted uh, in global industrial civilization and the dominant cultural paradigm. Uh, I don't know if Terence ever made the claim uh, that, that he had completely broken free of it. Uh, the best essay I ever remember reading, and I cannot find it anywhere, I actually called the dude and asked him, and he thinks I might have him mixed up with someone else. Maybe I do. And this is uh, journalist, uh, oh, listen to me, Robert Jensen. I have had the pleasure of interviewing uh, journalist Robert Jensen three times. Great guy. Uh, taught in uh, taught journalism in Austin for years. I think he and his lovely wife, uh, the uh, singer Eliza Gilkison, have moved out of Austin, Texas, to a small town in New Mexico to get away from the craziness of of Austin. I I could swear that it was Robert Jensen who wrote the best essay that I've ever found, and it was very 
uh, informative and helpful to me when I was first trying to figure out my next step in my evolution or what normies would consider my devolution. And it, and it was the subject of this essay was about learning to navigate uh, with, with, uh, with, with one foot in whatever you want to call it, since I'm not going to use the M word, uh, walking in the world of normies that, that you were raised in, uh, that your parents were raised in, the, the, walking in that world in the dominant cultural paradigm and in global industrial civilization with full knowledge, with full knowledge that uh, it, it, it is the uh, two-headed snake, and I'll just call it the normie snake, uh, that is destroying this planet, and to the degree that you are a willing participant in Normieville, uh, so I don't have to keep, uh, you, you know, repeating these terms. We're just going to call it Normieville, knowing, you know, to the degree that you willfully participate in it, you are willfully participating in the destruction of the planet. With that knowledge, learning how at least, at least to get one foot out of it, like Robert Jensen uh, has managed to do. Uh, even if you can get one foot out of it and uh, at least reduce your participation in uh, the uh, uh, destruction of the planet. Now, of course, I would say uh, the, the number one way uh, obviously is do not breed. If you are still of breeding age, get yourself sterilized. So there's, a, so there's that, there's that part, but then of course there's, um, you know, reducing your consumption and your ecological footprint and all of that stuff. Uh, also, with full knowledge, uh, knowing that uh, whatever lifestyle and consumer choices you make, uh, that you're doing nothing uh, to, to save the planet. For every molecule of CO2 you reduce in your life, some uh, clueless moron uh, breeder is going to bring onto the planet another human who's going to pick up uh, the slack uh, of this. But even so, as that fellow whose name I can't remember, you know, talking last night in that excellent essay I was sharing with you about the one thing you can change is the way you look at the world and, and respond to it the way which I will say is the way, the, the only question that each one of us needs to ask, you know, and I'm, I'm specifically talking to doomers, but you don't necessarily even have to be a doomer, but once you do once you are ready and you and you're not going to take the first step until you're ready um, but uh my my sitting here losing my train of thought as tired as i am uh you you you, you need to be ready and it's how you comport yourself, how you uh, react 
to the dominant cultural paradigm and and, uh, and and you do have the power to analyze if nothing else just the shit just the you know is Terence McKenna over and over again culture is not your friend it is not your friend it is not the planet's friend and so the, the best you can do is, is at least get one foot out of it and and, and then uh, you, you need to look at what this culture provides you and which parts of the culture and which parts of global industrial civilization a you, you, you just cannot do without uh, or, you know without becoming a a breatharian uh, living in a cave you, you know what I'm saying uh, and, and, and you know which which parts you you have to keep one foot in, and which parts of it you can reject, and you will find pretty quickly uh, that you can reject a hell of a lot of it. Uh, and, and I'm and, and you know you can reject popular music, you can reject uh, popular movies, you can reject sports. Um, you, you might be uh, finding what, what I, I'm sounding a whole lot like Orwell uh, in 1984, uh, you, you know, talking about uh, how the infamous they, the elites, whatever you want to call them, uh, keep themselves from, you know, keep the normies from ever revolting against the shit. It is by offering them, uh, what is it, uh, alcohol, uh, alcohol, sports, and music, and pornography. You know, like, obviously, Colony of Cells is not going to reject pornography. Uh, as long as people like uh, Colony of Cells are provided free internet porn, they are not going to rebel uh, uh, against this. And I guess as long as I can keep getting uh, my tequila every day. So, uh, I have decided that I am going to retain two shots of tequila every day. Uh, that this is one part of the, cult the dominant cultural paradigm and global industrial civilization I choose is two margaritas a day a cup of coffee in the morning, two margaritas at night. Uh, I am keeping those with this foot. Uh, I am rejecting, <clears throat> I, I am sure as hell rejecting American beer. I, I am 100% in favor of the Bud Light boycott, particularly the canned, uh, the, the canned Bud Light boycott, which has nothing to do uh, uh, with the reason that it's being. It's just that the very fact that the, uh, that canned Bud Light uh, even exists on this planet is an insult to my intelligence. I don't think I have ever had a can of Bud Light since the day I was born. I was rejecting that even when I was 
uh, a clueless moron real estate agent living in my, you know, in my four bedroom, three bath house with, with all of that shit. And uh, it's mainly all of that shit we're talking about. Uh, the the ninety five percent of the shit that you own, you do not need. I probably don't need fifty. 60% of the shit that I have, and, and I own about 10% of the material possessions uh, that, that I owned 15 years ago, that I have walked away pretty much from a, an 18-wheeler full uh, of crap, uh, of absolutely pointless crap. Uh, I still have too much of it. I've, I've regained uh, too much of it. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was pretty much stripped down to a backpack uh, when I first walked away into 2009, and now I'm building too much of this shit back up. But, uh... You know, just in my own life, you know, as I say, in, uh, when I pulled, well, when Terrence McKenna and the Mushroom God pulled my head out of my ass in 2008, uh, you know, other than my four-bedroom, three-bath uh, primary residence, uh, all of these... Uh, how many I was up to, I can't even remember. I think five. I, I've, I've mentioned this before. My goal uh, in 2007, when I met Terrence McKenna at age 48, yeah, 40, I was 48 when I, when, yeah, when I bumped into Terrence. 48 years old, my goal what I, my goal was that by the time I was 65, which is now one year away, that what I was going to do, a, a single man, a, a, a single man uh, with no children, uh, to leave his shit to, my dream, my goal in life was to acquire 40 houses by the time I was 65. At age 48, I was up to six, that I owned six houses by the age of 48. So I wanted to acquire, well, 40 pieces of real estate. Uh, some of it might have been uh, vacant land like, you know, what I own in Florida now, but I was going, by the time I was 65, uh, I was dedicating my life to acquiring 40 pieces of real estate. Uh, I would, uh, I am quite sure I would be a multimillionaire right now if I had not made the choice to walk away just the houses, six houses in Austin, Texas right now, J just six of them. Uh, th those six places, I, if I had held on to them, would be worth it, at least three million, at least three million dollars, uh, if not more. But my goal was to acquire 40 of them by the time I was 65, which is one year from now, and then I was going to retire, and every six months, I was going to sell a piece of, uh, of the real estate, you, you know, taking advantage of the equity that I had built up in them. And I was going to retire a multimillionaire, and just every six months, 
uh, I would sell one of my pieces of real estate, which would carry me through till I was 85, and, and I would remain a millionaire and, and uh, have all of this stuff, 40 pieces of real estate. I would be living in a fucking mansion. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying. And uh, after listening to, you know, Terrence McKenna and, uh, and, and Michael Rupert and then starting to, you know, go down the, uh, into the doomosphere, uh, I walked the fuck away from it. And, and I told a few tricks, but I have never claimed that I, well, if I have claimed that I walked away from that shit, I, I, I guess obviously, I, I, and, and I appreciate these two comments, uh, just making a clear amplification and clarification. Uh, that, uh, that, that I have never completely uh, walked away from it. I, you know, I, I can still pass as a normie. You, you know, I run a vacation rental business. Now, what I rent, well, this tiny house that I'm sitting in, you know, I rent free rough hewn uh, tiny houses, uh, you know, made by the Amish uh, for all intents and purposes, well, a little bit of electricity, no running water. They have outhouses, well, two of them. Uh, and what I, if I had stayed as a normie, I might still be and probably would be a major Airbnb uh, landlord, but it would not be three little tiny houses uh, out in the forest at a place called Bugs in a Jar Farm. They would be beautiful homes in Austin, Texas, renting for $300, $400 per night uh, it, it is the difference. And so now, as I mentioned before, counting my little trailer that I just wrapped up in a tarp this afternoon. So yeah, so now I have the main house, free tiny house rental units and a trailer. So I have five residential units. Uh, on, uh, on on my property now, I have one bathroom. Uh, I, I have five residential units. You add all five of them up, they total less than 700 square feet. All five of them combined. Uh, or I, I don't even know what the average, I should know this, I don't even know anymore what the average square footage of a normie house is in 2023. Just one house. Uh, my guess is, I, I'm, I'm just going to guess 3,500 square feet. So I have five houses and they add up to one-fifth of 3,500 square feet. Uh, if I had not taken one foot out of here, I would probably own, well, I would be closing in on my 40 houses uh, that were anywhere, good Lord, from 700 square feet to 3,000 square feet. Let's call it 2,000, and it, what would that be? 840 times 2,000. Uh, good, good Lord, I can't even do the math. Are you following me? Uh, as a lot of you know, I do have a flush toilet 20 feet from where I'm sitting. There is one flush toilet here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, I shit in a plastic bucket 
by choice. I do not use flush toilets. I prefer to shit in a five gallon bucket. I have a human your uh, compost pile. Uh, I do not use flush toilets. I guarantee you that John Smith uses flush toilets. There is nobody listening to this, I don't think, that has a flush toilet available to them and chooses to shit in a five gallon bucket. That is one way to walk with one foot in and one foot out. Uh, so the the I'm going to talk about this more. I'll just save this, but all I'm going to say about all those goddamn material possessions, what I do not miss on any level are those material possessions. They, what does Neil Young say? They drag you down and uh, and, and, and they drag you down and chain you down. Uh, that uh, anyway, it's a uh, I, I can't remember that great line. Maybe I'll look it up uh, tomorrow. So I do not miss on any level. Uh, all, all all of the you know that that truckload of planet eating, mostly made of plastic material possession crap. Uh, I do not miss it any more uh, than, than, than I would miss, uh, I, I don't know, uh, rolling a, a boulder uh, up the hill every day to, to have it roll back down uh, by morning. Uh, I, I, I've completely broken myself of that, although I still have too much of this shit. Although 99% of the shit that I buy, I get from Habitat for Humanity. The Amish uh, do my woodworking, and uh, I, I buy used, recycled, and reused materials to furnish uh, my tiny houses instead of going to uh, the furniture store or, or wherever. Uh, but anyway, we're going to pick up here tomorrow uh, because we have a lot to talk about, uh, about so we'll finally get back tomorrow. But uh, it's... It's all baby steps, guys. It's baby steps. But anyway, that's the wrap for tonight. And um, anyway, if, if there's anybody who thinks, particularly if you're 64 years old, uh, that, that, that you could go up against me, you might be able to beat my ass that's not hard, but I guarantee you, you little pipsqueak, I dare you to challenge me to uh, see who can do more physical labor uh, in a day. And uh, with the possible exception of Tannock, who's 36 years old, and Kevin Shanholzer, who I think is 53. Or are you 56 now, uh, Kevin? I think I would win the challenge. Uh, all right, little dog. But we got to uh, call it a night because uh, I have to take my gas-sucking truck to go pick up these Amish guys to help me move uh, some wood around tomorrow. And I need to get my beauty rest in my tiny house. This will be our last night in Blue Dragon Tiny House. Our last night. You love Blue Dragon, don't you? Get out there and enjoy 
your tiny house in your new tiny life while you still can. Bye guys.